and uh, looks, and uh, obviously these are very much of a concept we're not really designing, so it kind of gives you an idea of what it might look like. And this big complex, the other side is the younger, um, so we'll then there's an expansion possibility on that side in the future, whatever you want to do. And then here's the control, light power, um, yeah. I mean, women's bath and men's concession that can start both sides because you want to be able to have a concession that starts both sides. And in the contour, uh, we have done where we actually provided some chairs and tables for uh, folks that are not interested but just there to waiting on the kids can actually congregate, you know, and, and uh, maybe even um, uh, take part in concession uh, services. So that's uh, two sides. Any question on those? Now, as you know, it's really, really preliminary. We are kind of showing you what could be done. And I'm sure between now and, and when we actually do something, we'll do a lot more for those things. My biggest concern might yeah. have to be more data board conversation the whole state may hear. Is there a place for that? Well, we have not. Yes, we show it. Okay. We do have it. Okay. Yes. Right. We do have it. The diving board? Yes. Okay. It's, it's Thank right you. here. We, we haven't gone that far, but I don't think it would be. I think we could do both concepts within the same budgetary restriction. And how many lanes are in the pool? You said eight. Eight, eight lanes. Eight. Uh -huh. 50 meters. What's the term? Is it 16? Yes. If you, you, we have a, yes. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty large, and in fact, I don't know of any other in the state of Arkansas, besides the universities, uh, as a public facility. I don't know of any. So if, if you have no further question, let's go visit this a little bit. And I imagine most of you are familiar with where this is located now, I suppose. Walmart is way up there. And I think someone said, what is this? This is a some retail facility. Mm -hmm. and and this is the piece of property, 25 acres. And um, in one concept, it's a, l a little bit compact. We, and there are various sizes, and those are not finalized. The size can be varied. We can put in whatever size. But the circulation, basically, you're coming here, parking, you enter the quads, either points. And we, in this one concept, we are showing only one large concession. It could be that we could put a concession here and a concession here. It all depends on you how you want to, the amenities are provided. But in each facility we have uh, uh, batting cages, you know, pretty much located everywhere so that there's practice. Um, the largest field is, in, in this concept, is 350 feet, which is pretty large. And I heard a uh, uh, little discussion about football field, and, and it, it, it actually lends very well to that. We can build a football field here, <coughs> here, and the parking still remains the same. So we don't have to build additional parking if this is the concept we go with. Uh, and in here, a as you know, with the, we always need dirt. So we actually will harvest the dirt from the site. We'll convert that into a pond, uh, a sort of a recreation type pond, where we even sometime will provide a boardwalk, fishing pier, so that children can, it could be, uh, children can learn how to fish kids, and that we've done, in, and then the other amenity is a large, long pathway, which could be a very, uh, it's a, always an attractive amenity to most communities uh, for walking, jogging, however you want to use it. And they're usually light up, you know, lighted, so you can use it at night, and um, so I was in Paragool just to, the other day, a couple of days ago, and they have a, you know, site like this. It was almost dark up there, but there was light all over the place. There were so many people. I mean, it was even cold, but still people were all over the place running and jogging. And this is the other concept, same site, same uh, location, excepting it's a little bit more spread out. So in this case, we do have two concessions and a large uh, sort of a gathering for kids with the playground and things, things of that nature. But otherwise, it's identical. Now, this also... By the way, there is a creek goes through here. What we are basically doing is capturing the creek here, and we'll probably dig a ditch to completely divert the water so that it comes to the site. But 
otherwise it's almost identical to the other one. This is a little bit more spread out so we can have a lot of landscaping and a lot of places you put a lot of trees and things so it looks like a park environment. Well, we'll, we'll do that investment. I don't know. Uh, it's possible, but it does not prevent us from developing it. Uh, there are several so rules that we have to go by. Yeah, right. We've got to buy either credit or provide a credit, you know, one or the other. How big is that, uh, would that walking trail be? Uh, you know, I haven't really measured, but I would think it's probably about a mile or so, most likely. Close to, but may not be exactly. I'm thinking 1,250, yeah. About 4,000 4, feet, probably. Has there been any soil structure analysis or anything like that? No. Oh, but that's mm -hmm. further down the road? Further down the road. So well, we know, so and I know think Mayor recognizes it, that we have to do some field work here. There's no question. Okay. And Mayor has a pretty good idea are, where he's going to get the There dirt. have been other construction projects in this county up the hill that they spend a whole lot more money than what they have thought. Yeah. We're doing a, a yeah. football field and other things because of the, the poor quality, poor quality of the soil. soil. Yeah. But yeah. that's further down the road. That, that yeah, well, I think, you know, in any case, I, we know that we'll have to have some borrowed material. And may have some ideas. So once you borrow material at a certain depth, we can have a, what we call bridge. So in other words, you compact the dart on top of it, and that becomes the bridge for the. So we may be able to avoid some of those issues that you're talking about. Well, it, you know, there are engineering solutions to those things. Before, when we design, we'll do, as, as this gentleman pointed out, we'll do a soil survey. We'll do all sorts of uh, investigation to see how much water. We provide drains. In football field, these baseball, we'll have drains all around it so that it captures the water and not brings the field. Almost every time, with every project we've done, we capture the water. As long as you provide the for the water to be captured and drained out, you shouldn't have an issue. The same question I have for the pool. When you were talking about swimming pools, the some or one of the ones that we're at have a pool netting system that's automatic when if there's stuff in the water. And the problem was everyone in the building was choking on the swimming. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the maintenance issues. Like they're going to have to take out their entire flooring system and redo that. So I just wonder how much of uh, maintenance is a big issue, I think, for our city. I just wonder how much of it is. No, you're right. Absolutely correct. I mean, you know, a swimming pool operation is it's a treatment plant. You know, it's, it's, it's an industrial water treatment. So you, you have to have trained employees, and we have uh, we, we assign some money for training, and I think in the budget. So I think, you know, those things will be provided. And the system, those auto systems, has come a long way now. They're a lot better today than they used to be. So Mayor, I think I'm finished. So Mayor, just real quick, let me, let me address one on the ball fields. We know that that property is somewhat low, but as you all know, we have phase two that will bid in 2018 on our highway project going from Shell Superstock West out past Delta Farm and Timber where Highway 98 intersects. Now, the highway department has a funny way of hearing about this meeting before we wake up in the morning, so I'm in negotiating with them and I'll keep negotiating, negotiating with them for all of that dirt that comes off of that. And as you've noticed on the current project, a lot of dirt has been hauled out, a lot of dirt's been hauled in. I will talk with them about bringing the dirt from that project to this site. We should easily be able to build up three <coughs> foot if we need to. But again, more in this room have forgot about baseball than I know. But we do want those fields to have some moisture for grass to grow. So we will build up that site, and I will negotiate with the highway department about that field dirt, which just gets hauled off to no man's land. So we should have our free build up right there. The highway department's been great on this current project. I don't see anything to change. Uh, again, as Mazzana said, everyone here, everything about this can change. Sign up on the sheet, email your address, and check it. We'll send you plans. You look at it. Uh, Corey brings up a good point. I visited Texas, and that was a problem they had was with the, the fumes and the chlorine. Uh, that's why on the front end of this, before we ever move, we need to know what we're getting and what we're doing, and they hear our concerns. Uh, 
and, and, and that's what I can address to that. But we, we must move slowly. Maintenance, we passed out a preliminary budget to run and operate the ball fields. Uh, our next meeting in January, I'll give you a budget on water and, and what we're looking at to run and take care of the water. But as we've said all along, uh, uh, Councilman Water, where are you? He said present him a budget where it can operate and sustain itself, but he's not on board. That'll be my toughest critic. I love him to death, but I've got to present something that's good for our community. <laughs> Folks, if it's not going to work and it's going to be a financial burden, I vote to pass. If it's not going to bring tourism and tax dollars to our community and increase all of the revenue that runs our city from our schools to our hospital to our restaurant to our motels, we don't need it. I think it will do that, but we will move slowly. And I need your input, please. Uh, oh. Ms. Arnold, are you done? I'm done. I left you a question. I have asked, uh, and, and they'll hang around and answer anything. I've asked John Michael Hunter to come tonight and speak to the ball field side. Uh, John Michael has taken care of Stadium Street for the city the six plus years. I've been mayor six years. He's taken care of it with his tractor. The biggest expense the city has is paying the light bill and a load of dirt. We, we mow the grass, and that's about it. If it wasn't for John Michael, even though we look at Stadium, Stadium Street, we all may have an opinion, it wouldn't be what it is today if not for his help and the men and women that use it because the city puts absolutely financially, well, we put some money in a few years ago, but you know, not to the level we're talking about here. So I just asked John Michael to speak to it, kind of tell us from, from a player and a coach's standpoint what he sees here. And let me say this, next month at our January meeting, I've asked our Championship High School baseball coach David Sisson to speak to us. I've asked Jennifer Hubbard to speak to us as a downtown merchant and what this brings to, to a business. And I've asked Robert Dotson, who is a restauranteur in our community, to come and tell us what it does for them. So we're going to hear from three different sides next month and look at a water project. John Michael, you have the floor, sir. First, does everybody already have this? Is that How are you? Uh, like the mayor explained, I've been taking care of uh, what we do have now for you know, the last 14 <coughs> years uh, without any help from the city really uh, and trying to throw a few annual tournaments. Most of the time it's fundraisers, you know, to support a baseball team or a softball team or uh, breast cancer and so forth. And there's several different reasons. Uh, we're looking at this. We did some projections, of course, uh, that our facility the city would run the, con the concession and we would throw different tournaments with the tournament proceeds going to the city to help for uh, operating costs. Uh, it also would bring in, of course, extended revenue into the community. On your projections there, you know, I gave some uh, insight as far as basically what I do now. And as you can notice, we throw roughly five, six tournaments a year and uh, what it brings in as far as roughly you know, 2,000 people into the, into the city and roughly an estimated <coughs> $58,000 into the economy. Uh, I'm not going to say that's anything, but it's very small as to the scale of what a new complex would. Uh, at the bottom, uh, put together basically an average of what we project we could throw as far as if the fields are the right size, uh, the complex is built to specifications that would, of course, exceed our neighboring cities. Uh, these aren't national numbers, aren't regional numbers, but they are South Arkansas. So a lot of people, you know, the biggest question is, um, well, it works for this town or this town or this area, you know, they're bigger communities, so forth. I just don't think it'd work here. You know, or how do you, how, you really think people would come to Magnolia? Um, Basically, it's based off of El Dorado, Hot Springs, Hope, Texarkana. Uh, where I travel, my contacts that throw tournaments already, as well as what I know on the tournament statue. I mean, I've, I've had a tournament <coughs> team. Most people don't know. Let me start by saying, most people don't know exactly, like any sport there is, how big it is behind the scenes or the traveling amount of people that go with it. Um, some people might look at youth baseball and where it's very, very productive and very busy and family-oriented, it's six months out of the year. Uh, 
same as youth fast pitch softball. Uh, adult slow pitch is usually probably the most overlooked sport there is out there because most people just, you know, overlook it. You see our state, our complex out here, we run a church league, we got concert teams practicing and I throw tournaments out there and the majority of people in town don't have a clue anything's even going out there because one, where it's located and two, it's just, you know, if it's going on while you're already at home, nobody knows what's going on. Um, but there is a tournament going on, the same as baseball, if people with baseball and fast pitch would know just about every weekend there's a tournament somewhere. It's the same way on the adult circuit. And so there's a huge traveling and opposed to what youth is, it runs 12 months a year, constantly. Uh, for 12 years, I ran a tournament team uh, where we traveled 20 weekends a year. From January to end of August, we were playing somewhere all but one weekend a month. And so it can happen. Hope facility is built, is, is booked every single weekend. All year long, you have to call and book a weekend if you want to throw a tournament fundraiser there or so forth. Uh, it can happen here if we have the amount of fields and they're built to the specifications they need to be. Uh, in there, I have it projected, as you can see, where the city would throw one a month. You know, baseball we have projected one a month, and that doesn't even take into account a nice built complex on the right scale could possibly get the high school fast pitch state tournament or baseball tournament or so forth. You know, the sky's the limit when you're looking at what you could do and you're looking at a guaranteed two weekends a month to three to, to three. I would say three is feasible for the majority of months out of the year. I'm not going to say every month. I would say every month you can have at least one, one, some one event going on and some months two to three. Um, we have it estimated in there. I took numbers off of Jeff Owens, who presented last time from Batesville. And you're looking at just on, not even on the money that would run the facility, which if you look on there, the average we would bring in would cover the operating expenses. And that's an average total. That's not word of mouth two, you know, year down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road. It would constantly grow as long as the facility is run right, great concessions, and time poured into it. These are first year numbers to where you, we want to know, will it cover expenses? And it will. Then you look at, well, what's it bring to your economy? Well, just from what I throw now, which is a very, very small rock in the bucket, the estimated projection on a very, very, very conservative number is 10 times what you do now. And that's on the first dollar spent. If you look at how it turns over, I mean, you're looking at at least $500,000 brought into the local economy, which is a lot more than nothing. And if it turns over, let's say four times, that's two million. You know, there's a lot of money that can come into our city by it. You know, needless to say, if I have a dime in my pocket and looking to build something and I drive by and see it busy two or three times a month and I know that we just expanded to a four lane but we're still having traffic problems because we have too many people in town, I'm going to want to invest my money in another restaurant or in a hotel or something else that we need. You know, everybody looks at that we need to build more restaurants or have, you know, more stuff coming into town. You have to get the people here first. And I know it can happen. I'm around it every weekend. I've seen it. I've been a parent, player, coach, and done the maintenance end of it. So with the knowledge of all that, I'm telling you, if they're built the right way, breaking even in the first year is easy on operating. After that, it's guaranteed to tenfold your economy. So you know, anybody that wants to see the projections, want to know how I came to it, any questions at all, I'll be here and free to answer. But the way I look at it and the way I've seen it, if you're building it on an extension, you're paying for itself to run, you're bringing in 10 times the economy, it's no brainer to me. Any questions?
question is to John Michael. Uh, Mr. Well, not necessarily John Michael, but what role does SAU and Magnet Public Schools have on any of these projects yet? We, I have had conversations with Mr. Ward and Dr. Perry, both supportive. We want to do this where it will work with Magnet Public School on baseball and swimming <laughs> and SAU. Uh, you know, the conversation today Coach Sisson and I had is SAU throws a tournament. They want to play on campus. Are they going to play on our facility? It will be open to them because the more people in town, the more money spent in town, that's our goal and what we're after. Our door is going to be wide open. Uh, Coach Browning's here. We'll take input from him. How this project can benefit Magnolia is what it's about. I, I don't mean it wrong, guys, but manufacturing's not knocking our door down. Let's, let's go after this tourism dollar because... As John Michael said, and, and next month, I think Coach Sisson is going to really open our eyes to what, what this means, but parents travel and spend money. Uh, Coach Baskin's here. He's been doing it for years. It's out there. So we're going to work. We want SAU and Magnolia Public School at the table. Yeah, okay. I mean, financially or? Oh, we'd love to have them financially. Okay. Uh, I know that the long-range plan of Magnolia Public Schools is a part of the pool. Uh, I can't speak for Dr. Barry. He and I have talked. Uh, Dr. Barry has people to answer to. We have not gone and said, hey, write us a check. They know we're out there. We haven't got that far. Uh, but yeah, I, I think they're aware. And one other quick question. Is yeah. there a back way to get out of the ballpark? I mean, do we have to go through a residential neighborhood to get out? I don't know if there's a back exit. No, we'd like to, but we haven't got that far. How do we get across that creek and that high line? That has been discussed. I've had our city inspector do some investigating and snooping and how we could get between, uh, can't tell you the doctor's name that lives first house on the left, but how we could come out of Nations Creek. So, you know, probably not, but we're looking for two exits on the highway. Yeah. Everything's in planning, everything can change and pertaining to how the size of the fields and amenities. I thought we'd do it like a mule rider game, just go shut traffic down. Councilman Waller. So, <coughs> All right, is this site the only one we're considering? I mean, would we be willing to consider other sites, or sure. is this, this sure. land donated? I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering, is this, are these plans that we have, can they be picked up and moved elsewhere? Yep. Okay. Okay. No question about that. And the reason I mention that is because we had a meeting with the Boys and Girls Club with David Smith the other day, and he mentioned he would like for them to be involved in this, and he even mentioned. Maybe there's some land next to them that may be able to be used and, and build on what they already have. I don't know, just a thought. Just let, let me say this. There was a football field mentioned earlier. In no way is this project trying to put Magnolia Public Schools out of football business or Boys and Girls Club out of business. We're, we're not playing weekly ball. We're after the John Michael Hunters that live in Mount Pleasant, Texas, to come to our town. We're after traveling weekend tournament play. We are not in any way going to compete with or take away from the Boys Club. The city will continue to give its 35,000 a year to the Boys Club that it does. Uh, the land, I've spoken with the family, unless they're, and, and their minds can always change, but at this point, uh, I believe the family, if the city will move, the family is okay. And as far as that land being donated, some tax compensation made, but Anything can change. That family could jump up and say, we want this or we don't want anything. But right now, I'm moving forward that way uh, with the group, the project is. But it can go anywhere. That's why you guys are here to tell us. Right, and I, I just think it's worth consideration anyway to, to look at partnering with the boys. So I'm not saying we have to do anything, but I think it's worth hearing out, at least hearing what they have to say. Anyway. Is there anybody here tonight to speak for the boys club? <coughs> We'll try to get with David and see what yeah, we think. We'll get, they're they're supposed to come up with some plans. What is the total acreage of that lot, or what can we do with the total acreage? I believe the ball fields are sitting on 25 acres, roughly, and uh, both of both the lots. Yes, that's on the same piece. Of the yes. Uh, the pool, we've talked about placing it on the hill at East Side Park where the ball field is at that we don't use other than to practice. Keep Pittman and Hollingsworth Street open, take the little street out of the park, bulldoze the hill, good hard clay base, something that we could put that on that it would stay. Uh, you'd have
parking over near the uh, tennis court area of the park. You'd also have parking as you turn off of Hollingsworth now currently coming in the park. We could remove those trees. You could see it from the highway. Uh, I mean, any number of things. Guys, it, the sky's the limit right now. Coach Damon, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. At one point, there was 15 million talked about. Mm -hmm. Are there options for this is what you can get for nine, this is what you can get for 12 million, and this is what 15 million looks like? Here's what we're hopeful of. We're hopeful that when we start putting cost estimates to it, that it would come in under that. If this makes it to the ballot, and it will be the city's council's decision to put it to the ballot of the people, your first question on the ballot would be, do we want to refinance the sales and use tax bond that's currently at 4.55% and refinance that to 3.2%? Yes or no? Your second would be, do we want to go to a project in our city up to $15 million? It could be $8 million, it could be 50, it could be six. It can be all over the map, but we must keep it under 15. Thirdly, do we, and that's a yes or no, Thirdly, do we want to lower our sales tax rate from 10.375 to 10.2, yes or no? I've had four people say, Mayor, why do you say that? Everybody likes to hear cutting taxes. Four people that I value their opinion say it. 10.375 to 10.2 is not a lot. Take that excess and let it flow in city general and cover issues that we, and folks, we did budgets today. We run our city on three quarters of a cent, not even a full penny of every dollar you spend, we get three quarters of a cent. We don't get 10.375. So there's been some conversation. Leave 10.375 and let the excess flow in general and fix issues that we have. Because guys, running the city cost goes up every year. Income, we were just about, you know, pinpoint. I'll say the last thing and I'll be quiet been asked a lot lately, can you see an increase in alcohol sales? Our income should have went through the roof. With oil and timber being down, with people losing their jobs, with the uncertainty of the economy just yet, folks are not so quick. Yes, people that, uh, forgive me, media, people that smoke and drink, they're going to smoke and drink. But if you lost your job, you're not buying tires for your car, you're not buying a new car. So we're, we're pretty well holding steady. I feel like if oil and timber were where we're at, we would have seen that increase because we're holding kind of where we're at. So, any questions while I'm here and I can feel the, the heat rise? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry, I was like getting here. Uh, the, the entrance into the ballpark, the entrance into the ballpark, you come off of uh, 79. an option. Uh, I'm going to visit with the, the family east of Big Boy Toys because we have access into the, uh, the billboard signs. We're going we're gonna to try to gain two points of access. Okay. So it would be on the other side of Big Boy Toys then? Yeah? One of them. We're going to try to. One of them would be. And the we, other we'd, like be to, we'd like to come in. I would like to. Yeah. Would you like that traffic in front of your store? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but, and, and we know that, and, you know, and that's been said, what are we going to do with the traffic? Folks, if we can get that far, and this place is full, and it's bringing that kind of money, we'll figure it out. I don't have the authority to shut down a state highway, but if it means dollars for our town, I'll shut down a state highway. It won't last long because the state will come haul me off. But listen, guys, we have a chance. I mean, we're cutting taxes on both ends if y'all if y'all choose to. We don't have to spend 15 million. I hope we don't. Uh, operate. I don't. I, I told Coach Sisson today. I don't want to drive by this thing in five years and y'all run me off because it failed and there's a pine tree growing through home plate. That's not what we need. But what you're going to hear next month, I think, is going to really because I heard it today and it was whew, what I heard tonight. John Michael and I have worked together for six years. Uh, love him or hate him. He worships that sport. He's over there. The city would be lost without him. So, sir. Okay, so I guess I didn't 
Maybe I didn't hear it right. Okay, so are we going to be able to see this is what you get for $9 million? This is what you get for X? And this might be what you get for 15 Because that has a bearing on is there six fields, four small ones, two big ones? Okay. Is it, you know, I, I'm just I, trying I, to understand I, I what, what you get. I can We know from previous discussions with the mayor and with some of your council members and with the bond company, okay, how much money can be raised, which is $15 million at the, the concept we were given now. So we sort of put out concepts based on that target, okay? So I don't think anybody wants to lose the amenities. So we're trying to, it's sort of the converse. We're trying to get all the amenities you want into that dollar figure. So we're trying to do that real hard. Now, if we wanted to start shrinking things, there's no question that we can do it. And but let's say that the size of your pool gets smaller, the size of your play area gets smaller, those kind of things. But the concepts are pretty much based on that $15 million issue that you see now. Now, if that's impalatable to the city and we need to shrink that down, that's what we'll do. Well, I'm just asking, can we at least get the option? Yeah, sure. Because I'm looking at the ball fields and I'm thinking, okay, if you lose two fields, you might play two hours longer that night, sure. but you still get that tournament. Or what What can we do? Okay. Instead of just saying, yeah, and I hate to say it this way, I mean, obviously the banker would love you to take out 15 million. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> but if you're working on, I mean, if we're just talking what he can get allowable, <coughs> You know, but it's with just that said, you still want, if you're building a new complex, you want it to be competitive on a statewide basis. I think you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah, right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, don't okay. build it, don't build it halfway. Yeah. I mean, make There's it nothing I'm right saying about time. building it halfway. I, I, understand, I understand what he's asking. Good point. Right. 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 Put the pencil to this, bring us back a dollar amount, and it's 20 million. We know we've got to shrink. I understand. Give us options. We're, we're not going to exceed that. But that doesn't mean they have a free checkbook to go to 15 million because what they don't know is I've got my phone in my other ear talking to somebody else that's going to give me a second opinion. So we're going to keep them honest. Now, I started with Perry because I met them through the Arkansas Municipal League, which takes care of 500 cities in our state. So. That's a good start, but y'all know me. I, I, you may think I like to spend it, but I like to save it too where I can. But I agree. We're not going to go halfway and cheap and have a problem because the biggest thing I hear is when I say I'm from Magnolia, Arkansas, where's that at? You guys know it. How do you get there? It's hard to find us. But along with, with our, our, our university, with this project, with our town, People will come to us. They'll find us, but we've got to do it right. We're going to keep talking. Nothing. People do not leave here and say they're building what I don't want. We're not. We're still talking. And, you know, we're not going to pad this just to pad our own. We've done lots of these kind of projects. And that's, that we got, the, the, probably the number one most important thing to me is that after I'm gone, everybody still likes us, you know, and, and that we did a good project. Too. So we're not going to just pad things just for the sake of padding. But, you know, we've got enough experience to know that a 200-foot field or 250-foot field costs X to develop. So that, that's pretty standard. So it's just a matter of, of, of adding to a cut in the minute because this is nothing, this is nothing that's extravagant by any stretch of the and, and, a, and a good point, we want to take a field and can we build this field to, to do multiple things? Can we play different you know, I guess what I'm saying is it, it may be a long, it may be a 350-foot field, but we may pay a, play a 200-foot game on it. We're going to work that way because we may not be able to do it on so. Sir, the projection is built, it's put together on six fields. And some would be bigger than what's shown at 300 foot. So not only can the adult tournament that are going to pull the revenue in would be played on it, but you can also play youth baseball and youth softball on them as long as they're big enough for the adult as well. And so, you know, this is built on basically, as you see in there, is a, you know, our church softball league we have already. Uh, you know, there's flag football tournaments for not only adult, but college age. You know, there, there's nothing against, you know, starting a weekly night college soccer league. 
anything to be able to get people in, they spend money in your concessions and you're giving something for the public. You know, whether it be a practice field for a football or a couple of concrete pads with basketball goals for the public to enjoy. You know, whatever we can fit in to make it nice. But these projections are only on six. But like I said, the, uh, the sizes and so forth would, you know, would change and be for what benefits us the best. But, you know, this just takes into baseball, softball at conservative. There's nothing like when you have it, you know, coming up with new stuff for us. You know, SAU, whether it be intramural or, you know, just any of the, uh, the church associations wanting to start different sports, whether it be kickball that started up over the last few years. You know, like I said, flag football or soccer or anything that, that's not only just youth where the boys club carries it, but for adult or college age. You know, what we're looking at is trying to bring something in that not only we can throw tournaments and get people into town, but also you have to start with something for your college kids to want to enjoy. Something that they're interested in and you can start up. We can always shrink baseball and do fewer fields. And if the land's there and we find out that the money's available and that you want to expand, that's not a big issue to expand either. So that could be done. Pool, different story. It sort of is what it is. You know, it's sort of hard to shrink it or expand it based on the amenities. But the ball fields, there's all kinds of different ways to move the, the price of those fields upside, you know, up and down. Chad, question? I'd like to ask Richard, he built a lot of travel softball tournaments. How many fields do you need? And, I mean, they've had some huge tournaments mm -hmm. with those girls. That girl softball is amazing. If you went to actually four Four fields at 300 to six fields, like John Mike said, 300 and could put retractable fences in. Six is all you need. You're not, you're, you know, I, I've, I've talked to, you know, a lot of people. Eight fields, you're not going to get enough people in to come to South Arkansas. Six fields, you could. The reason why we came up with six is because you're wanting to make it feasible to where not everybody's going to come to your tournament every time. You know, let's say you had a, a party every time. Everybody's not going to come to it every time. You've got to have something to draw different people. And so we've got six because not only will we throw in some of our own, but like I have down there, U-Triple-S-A is the national baseball or fast pitch so forth organization that most of your traveling teams play. And in doing that, they break it down <coughs> to each age group. Well, if you look at 7-year-olds through 12-year-olds, which is the main bulk of the age group playing, there's six ages. And so to have a tournament to bring in the people you need and to have them feasible to rent it, you'd have to have six fields to where you can carry all age groups. Because if I have three kids and one's eight, 10, and 12, I would rather come to Magnolia where they're having a big enough tournament for all three kids to be playing at the same place than come and they only have three fields or four fields and two of my kids are having to play here and my spouse is having to travel to another city to play. If that's the case, then I'm going to look at a tournament that's big enough in another city that all divisions are off. So therefore, you want it big enough to be a feasible for ever for big tournaments to come and use. Not that they're always going to be used all six at one time. Most of your, you know, slow pitch would would use three or four each time. But you need it big enough to where you can host the big tournaments. That's that's you know going to spread your word of mouth. The biggest thing is is you want to get the word that we have now out to what we're going to have and then it grows. So it needs to be big enough to attract who's going to spread the positive results, but not necessarily all of them are used at the same time. So again, the proposal is on eight or six fields. What, what are we John, we were John Michael's numbers were on six fields. Okay. We have drawings for eight. As we said tonight, we can have six or three. The projected was six, and then we've been in discussions on if more land was available or comes up, you know, possibly having a seventh that's bigger for high school baseball, SAU baseball, so forth to be able to use. The thing is, is you don't want to build too many of the big fields and then be taking up your acreage and your dollar where the small fields is what you need. So basically, I have like four, three hundred foot, and because that's going to push your 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 slow pitch softball that goes twelve months a year, I've got three hundred.
so it needs to be played for them. So I've got four of those, but then two 200s, because the women divisions will play on the 200. They prefer to have the bigger, but they play on the 200 now, several places. And so I have it projected on four, four of the 300-foot fields and then two of the small 200s. And the, and the girls play on that as well as the sevens and eights and so forth play on the smaller fields. And then as you get older, you need a bigger field. And they all adapt to the 300 until you get into high school or college. And they would have to be a little bit bigger. And that goes back to the sign-in and the email. Please share your comments. Let's don't make a mistake with this. We get one bite at the apple. Let's make it right. Whatever the fields need to be, that's what we want them to be. Uh, Councilman Roy, is that? Uh, Dr. Fox? We spent a lot of time on the field. I'd, I'd like to hear some comments from folks who are better in the know about the dimensions of the pool building. You know, aside from the need for a large, for, for a longer pool for the tournaments, what I mean, what about the dimension of the locker room, those facilities? Does anybody have any comments about the pool? We spent a lot of time on the football field. <coughs> taking your high school team and I have 22 and cramming them into a tiny space and and you if you know anything about high school kids for some reason they think they need their bag needs a seat too so um, well, the thing about deck space and swimming you know like at a baseball park they have a dugout for the kids so like deck space is not only for people coming to watch the swim meet it's also for your actual swimmers too at high school meets, they all sit in one, you know, as a team in one area. Um, at USA meets, AAU meets, you know, they might be with their family, spread out with their friends. Uh, during the summers, we would take sleeping bags and put them on the floor, you know, wherever there was area. So deck space is key for not only people coming to watch, but for swimmers and the teams as well. The amenities in the locker room, I think, exactly, you know, Brian's locker room is, is it's nice. It's a solid locker room. Um, it's small. Uh, you definitely want to have your facilities just for the people to use the facility and, and that kind of thing. And then there is space for people to who are your going to be your community swimmers that are going to come every morning at six o'clock and swim, and they can rent their locker. So you're going to want to have enough locker facility for you know whoever, Parnell Van, because he comes and swims every morning at 6, and he doesn't want to have to carry his suit every day, so he pays that fee. Um, you definitely want to have a diving well. Just as an example, El Dorado shot themselves in the foot when they took their diving board out, because now they can never host a state meet. Um, so that is the number one thing. You want to be able to host a state meet. That kind of... Um, that, that play in Bentonville last, last February, they not only had a concession stand, but they had people with food trucks mm -hmm. in the community area. One thing I wanted to point out was, I know our 15 swimmers in Magnolia who travel either to Texarkana or El Dorado 
three, up to three times a week to swim with year-round swim teams. We could draw, you know, Tony Hartsfield at Lafayette County, he had, well, you know, his son started out and swam, and then, and then Aaron came to Magnolia, but swam there. And he's had one, he just had one other that wanted to swim. But that's where that draw could start. You know, the smaller schools, Taylor, they might want to start a swim team because if they can get their kids that want to be a swimmer up to a USA practice, a year-round practice, then that could build a team for Taylor. You could build a team for Lafayette County because that's how our biggest part started with because so many high school kids would go, go to El Dorado and then more just, the, you know, not as experienced swimmers, not year-round in that sense, that competitive USAA youth swimmer. But you're going to get a draw not only from your community here, but from the smaller towns around that have, that are, you know, have school, like I said, Taylor, Lafayette County. You could get more Camden people coming. And you're also going to keep your money in town because I know when we went to El Dorado, every, we went three nights a week, my family did, but three nights a week, we bought Subway or Burger King or Pizza or and whatever it was over there. Yeah. 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 I have 22. Okay. I would say to add to that also that there's been a, a, I have not researched this particularly, but D2 swimmers for college is a really growing sport right now. They need more sports. And so that it's just growing for a lot of other states too. There's only a couple of teams in Arkansas right now. And um, for the University of Ozark is one that just started this one yeah. a couple of years ago. But it is a, it's a growing sport. And he, he drove to Brian. He was asking about Riley. He was asking me about my swimmers. I mean, he came straight up to me, you know. And of course, I, because I'm a mule rider till the day I die, so I wanted the mule rider swim coach to be there, you know, recruiting those high school kids. But um, he drove all the way from, where is it at? It's like on the border, Missouri border. Wins back, wins. There's several schools in Oklahoma that we make ourselves to come to. So you do? But, you ask about team size, high school 22, but Magnolia Dolphins pushes 90 every summer. That's right. Two visions I have. One, this opens up swim to SAU. They bring swim back. Coach Brownie, not, not trying to help you there, but we bring <laughs> 22 kids on this campus. They swim. Their parents come to town. Some, their grandparents come to town. That's more people. That's more money. It's more opportunity to open our campus to other kids. SAU's involved in swim. That keeps our kids at home. Uh, you know, when I take Barbara River, he just jumped in my head. He was a ball, he's a baseball player. He's going to stay home. We have this pool that keeps our kids at home. Big concern of mine. Our kids go off. They never come home. We get old and die. They sell our place. We're gone. You know, forgive me, but I put it to the city council. Where are your kids? Will they come home? And why? And for those of you whose kids left and went off to the university, they're gone. Will they come home? Probably not. Why? Opportunity. Is this project going to keep all of our kids at home? No. But it's going to give opportunity. There's going to be a sporting goods store open. Uh, you know, the, the kind of bats and gloves and swimsuits, you don't just go to Walmart and buy them. I'm not picking on Walmart. God bless them. We're glad to have it. Something else. Think about the kids walking around in our county that don't know how to swim. You know, the boys club has taught them how to swing a bat, how to study, how to play football. Think about the kids that don't know how to swim because swim's not a big thing in their home. They didn't grow up with you must know how to swim. We're going to open up a whole other opportunity. It's going to give Coach Demon or her successor an opportunity to take kids at an early age like most of us. Mine were in the water at four. These kids will have an opportunity. We don't know the potential walking around the streets of Magnolia for championship swim teams in our community. So just, just two things that I say. Let me say one more thing. Please. We talk about kids going away to college and staying. You know, I graduated a huge group of seniors last year. And out of them, one, two, two went off to college, and the rest of them stayed here. And out of all of them, I almost guarantee out of the ten, Six of them would have been on the swim team. I mean, Sarah Jennings has twin boys, and one went off and one stayed here, and I know I'm pretty sure both would have stayed here. You know, fastest boy in the South and third fastest in the state last year. You might have rethought where he went to school, too. So, you know, there is 
I mean, that's just more money here. Any other questions from us tonight? Yeah. Please. While we're dreaming, uh, <laughs> let's take it back to um, the six first there for Football because we have a lot of little leagues here, and you know I see it's a lot of revenue to be generated in that aspect because they travel a lot, and this could this could give them a home base for other teams to come in <coughs> and support us. I could be outvoted, but our Warrior football program needs a place to play, right. and I would be proud to build a football field with this complex, and that could be the home of the Warriors. If you've never been to a Warrior football game, I've been to one. It will, it will touch you. I mean, those those little guys. I mean, it's like they're pros, and they play hard. They have good support from the coaching staff and the community. The next time they're playing at SA, you go look at the bleachers. I've seen it change. I teach at the school of the main age of the Warriors, and I've seen it change kids' lives, right. young men's lives. I have. The last yeah. project we built was the new sports complex in Cabot. It's an exact discussion took place. And we did end up building two football fields on that campus and they're tremendous. They were huge like crazy. We very recently run into that, that issue. And the Warrior program to my knowledge is, is like most of us in this room. Those men and women coach for free. Uh, you know, it's just a great time. Any other comment tonight? Perry and Mazan will hang around for a little bit. They will not be here next month. I think from this point moving forward, it's up to us. As I said, for those of you that came in late next month, uh, Coach David Sisson, who's in the back of the room, will speak to us on a whole nother concept of what this means to us and what we're looking at. Jennifer Hubbard has agreed to come and speak as a merchant in what this last spring baseball tournament did for her business. And I called and asked Robert Dotson, Chicken Express, to come and give us the restauranteer side of what it's going to do to his business. I've talked to him in the past and he told me I'd like them to share their stories with us. Uh, we're on the email. We're going to email pictures. If you have comments, we're begging you, please. Nothing is concrete. We must have your input. Come on. I would like to put another nugget for those that don't know. Right now we currently have eight traveling baseball teams few days is here in town. They're traveling elsewhere at least twice a month. That's from seven year olds to twelve year olds right now. So you're looking at pushing a hundred kids and a hundred families that's going elsewhere to play. Ms. Baker? Um, I think we probably also maybe need to I think Mr. Shin's here. Uh, we probably also need to know what it is that you're looking at in terms of standpoint as a hotel motel business because uh, we do get three percent of all stays in our A and P tax. Okay. And so that affects a lot of organizations and they know it. And so um, I think it would be also nice to hear that from a hotel standpoint. Mr. Shin, if Greg feels like it or yourself, I'll get with you. We're going to meet probably mid to late January. If you could just throw something together and then, you know, give us some numbers of what I, I see what Ellie's saying. If, 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 if their rooms are full Friday night, Saturday night, check out on Sunday because Mr. Shin has told me weekends are a little slow in their business. What would it mean to the A&P side, which we do give back to our community? On the projection, as you notice, the Blossom Festival tournament I throw yearly. Right now, we, we carry 30 teams with basically no you know, facility we have now. In the projection, it has 50, and I think that's very conservative. Uh, on the verge of, of looking at hotels and other, otherwise, the bigger the tournament, the more it can go into double day, three days. I take into account, uh, we could, there's no reason we couldn't be pushing the numbers that the Watermelon Festival holds. Uh, we have a very comparable festival. Uh, we're in the middle of playing season instead of at the end and when it's so hot for them. And where I'm projecting 50 teams coming in, they have 100. They have for the last 10 years been right at 100, 105, 110. I've done the averages. Um, if you take that into account to our 50, uh, our, day, our tournament runs one day. There's one story. You know, it's Friday from 8 o'clock to after midnight, Saturday from 7 or 8 in the morning till after midnight, and Sunday. So that's a three-day tournament. They're going to stay somewhere. Not everybody, but a good majority is going to stay somewhere those two nights. You know, not taking into account that 
when you build six and you bring in the U trip organization instead of one day tournaments, they're two day baseball tournaments. Absolute no way around it. You have to play two days. So that's hotels being rented. But on the adult wise, I mean, if you're looking at comparing what we have now to growing like a watermelon, you know, you have the, the fields. That's what they have, and that's the difference. Is they have multiple fields that are in great playing shape. And you're looking at doubling every number I have on that, from the profit to uh, I believe right now estimated 50 teams comes in as an estimated $60,000 in our local economy. You know, and theirs is 120. You know, you're talking an extra sixty thousand dollars and two nights they have to stay somewhere. To the five council members present, thank you. Appreciate your support and you're always being here. Anybody have anything? Now's the time to say it till next month. Everybody promise to email comments. Please help us with this project. Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you for coming.